Hello everyone, and welcome to my Young and the Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Chance showed up at Crimson Lights with a picnic basket. He replied that seeing Sharon was the highlight of his day and invited her to a breakfast picnic in the park. While Sharon claimed to be in a meeting with Adam, she actually invited Chance to join her for lunch. He consented, they Sharon a kiss, and then she departed. Summer arrived a short while later and made a joke about the exquisite picnic basket for one. It was meant to be for two, but Chance said that hadn't worked out. Summer was invited to accompany him. Summer concurred. She was instructed to go get a coffee and follow him. At home, Jack questioned Diane about the Corthouse wedding because they could have a larger ceremony later. Diane responded that the service had been flawless. She concurred that a large party with friends and family may be held later. She was happy that they had formalized their relationship right away. According to Jack, he would never let Diane leave. Billy showed up a little later and gave Jack and Diane his congratulations. He mentioned to Jack that he believed Ashley and him had made some progress. He asserted that he thought she had bought into their act. He claimed that Ashley was persuaded that he was enraged with Jack for hastily getting married to Diane. He claimed that winning Ashley's trust had been a positive move, but they still needed to take it farther. Lily was instructed by Jack to take all necessary action to join their conspiracy as a co-conspirator. Ashley and Tucker changed into their clothes in a suite at the athletic club. Jack was too far gone, according to Ashley, who stated she had given up trying to save him. Tucker was quite happy. He questioned whether she was ready to let Jack and Diane fall apart on their own so that she and Tucker could concentrate on their own lives. She asserted that Diane would make a mistake because she lacked experience, and then she and Tucker would intervene, seize control of Jabot's most valuable assets, incorporate them into their expanding empire, and salvage Jabot. Ashley concurred that Jack could not be saved. Devin looked intently at the portrait of Catherine inside the Chancellor home. He recalled a discussion he had about Tucker with Catherine. What Devon's answer to Tucker's offer had been, Catherine inquired. Devon claimed he had turned down the offer. He claimed that he had told Tucker that he couldn't buy his love by giving him some glamorous job. Devon claimed that Tucker wanted him to be content, but given how readily he was able to lie, Devon believed that Tucker was trying to take advantage of him. That might be the case, according to Catherine. Devon questioned Catherine's decision to give Tucker more than one opportunity. Catherine informed Devon that she wanted to think that Tucker's desire to make amends was serious. Devon questioned how she could tell whether Tucker was sincere. Although she insisted she didn't, she loved to think he was a changeable person. Devon acknowledged that he had said something harsh to Tucker, and Tucker didn't appear to be pretending that the remark had wounded him. Catherine asserted that giving Tucker the opportunity to succeed would be the only way for them to learn what was truly on his mind. Catherine remarked that Tucker was family, and no matter how much hurt they caused, one always supported one's family. Summer greeted Jack and Diane at Jebot on their union. She told Jack that Chelsea had been hired as the creative director. Jack thought Chelsea was a great hire, he claimed that Chelsea's perspective on her Chelsea by Jabot designs was distinct. He declared that he had complete confidence in Summer's plans for Marchetti and that he was eager to see what Summer and Chelsea would be able to accomplish together. Summer informed Jack that she had recently visited Harrison, who had informed her that Kyle was away. Diane expressed shocked that Kyle hadn't informed Summer. She claimed Kyle had business in New York, Asked if he was with Audra by summer. Since Audra was his boss, Jack said that he was. Kyle had acknowledged that he and Audra were sharing a bed, according to Summer, who then notified Jack and Diane. She claimed that Kyle had left Jebot and her behind and was now content. Summer has gone. Jack inquired as to Kyle's thoughts from Diane. He must be aware that he is making things worse for himself with Summer, she insisted. Kyle didn't appear to be thinking much, in Jack's opinion. 
He claimed to have seen Kyle and Summer triumph over numerous obstacles and had faith that they would finally get out of the predicament they were in. Even if Kyle could forgive Summer, he claimed, their relationship would probably not be able to be saved. Kyle was ruining his life, and Diane told Jack that she hoped they could do more to help. Jack said that only Kyle was capable of making things right, and that his liaison with Audra was merely Kyle's attempt to avoid feeling anything for as long as possible. Diane warned Jack that worrying about Kyle and keeping an eye on Ashley wasn't the best way to start their marriage. Their marriage, according to Jack, was the only thing that was going well, and it gave him the assurance that they could handle any problem, personal or professional, together. Billy reflected on a recent conversation he had with Jack regarding Ashley and Tucker as he sat on a park seat. Jack admitted to Billy that he disliked placing Billy in a precarious situation. Jack expressed his admiration for Billy's ability to turn his life around, but cautioned that upsetting a firm and pretending to fail could damage Billy's reputation in the business community. Billy said that when it came to safeguarding his family and his father's legacy, he didn't care about his reputation or what the general public thought of him. Jack claimed that Billy's initiative would have made John very happy. Billy claimed he was taking the proper precautions to prevent things from spiraling out of control. Billy was informed by Jack that there was no going back once they had begun. Billy contacted the athletic club and inquired about Ashley's whereabouts. She was in the dining room, he was informed. Billy cut the call off. Summer informed Chance that Kyle and Audra were traveling together in another area of the park. Chance said that it seemed like routine Newman media business, but Summer claimed that they both knew Kyle was having an affair with Audra. They were together at work and after work, much like she and Kyle had been in the past, so she couldn't pretend that it was a casual thing anymore. Because Kyle had abandoned her like she was nothing to him, she was unsure of why she even cared. When would she reach a better place like Chance, and why couldn't she just let it go? Summer was grieving the breakdown of her marriage when Chance said there was no set period of time for grieving. This comment hurt. Chance claimed that in his dreams he, Abby, and Dominic would do a variety of activities together, including take trips, celebrate anniversaries, and age together. However, none of these things ever materialized. Before he could move on, he claimed he had to lament the envisioned future. Summer would arrive, he promised. Summer admitted to Chance that she had already lost Kyle, but that this time seemed different. She claimed that each time she got a little bit closer to letting go. Chance cut in and claimed that it vanished. Summer concurred. Chance claimed that there was no such thing as closure since each time she saw Kyle, memories of the past would flood back, though they became less painful. He claimed that because they were co-parenting and he couldn't avoid visiting Abby, he did so frequently. If Summer kept seeing Harrison, he said she would start dating Kyle. Summer was adamant that she would continue to date Harrison. Chance questioned Summer about what might occur if Kyle appeared and announced his forgiveness at that precise time. After a protracted pause, Summer declared that she didn't believe they could return to their previous location because so much had changed. Chance acknowledged the situation's reality and suggested that was a good place to start. Sharon came as Chance and Summer were discussing their distinct upbringings. Sharon explained to Chance that she had postponed the meeting because she felt awful about declining his request for a picnic, but she made note that Summer had taken her place. Summer advised Sharon to enjoy the lovely picnic box Chance had created for her. Summer refused Sharon's request to stay, stating that she had to leave for work. She appeared a little disappointed as she left after thanking Chance. Sharon inquired about Summer's condition, Chance said that Summer would be okay because she was a strong woman. Summer needed a buddy, and Sharon told Chance that it was great that he could be there for her. Chance expressed his sincere gratitude for Sharon's ability to attend the picnic with him. He claimed to be aware of the strain involved in starting the company. Seeing him, according to Sharon, was the highlight of her day as well. She claimed that because of the unexpected turns her life had taken, she couldn't let work get in the way of what really mattered. They made love. 
Tucker questioned Ashley about the possibility of using Billy's disappointment in Jack in the athletic club dining room. Ashley claimed Billy was enraged with Jack, but she wasn't sure if it had been sufficient for Billy to turn on Jack. She claimed that over the years, Billy and Jack had a number of disagreements. She questioned whether they ought to lead Billy and follow the trail. Tucker inquired as to whether Billy remained the lookout for number one guy. Ashley informed Tucker that she had noticed Billy had recently been in a different frame of mind. She stated having Billy on their side would be fantastic and beneficial. Tucker proposed that they start their persuasive campaign. When Billy got there, Ashley invited him to join them. Billy queried whether they disapproved of the breakfast that Mrs. Martinez had prepared. According to Ashley, they had to take a break from the newlyweds. Tucker left after claiming to have a meeting with Devon. Ashley presumed Billy hadn't contacted Jack when she inquired about his well-being. Billy acknowledged that he had avoided Jack and Diane like the plague. Ashley acknowledged that she had run out of things to think about. She remarked that an immediate action was required. She reaffirmed that she will pursue legal action to remove her assets from Jebot. Billy was reminded by Ashley that Diane would be pursuing his position. Billy acknowledged that he had given it some attention and questioned why Diane wouldn't pursue the co-CEO post rather than remaining as chief talent officer. Billy was informed by Ashley that after Diane was named co-CEO, Jack would permit King Jack and Queen Diane to rule over their father's business and home. Billy inquired as to how they could reason with Jack. Ashley rejected the idea that it was feasible. After what transpired the previous night, she said Jack would be out to get her and perhaps Billy. What does that mean for Jabot? Billy inquired. Ashley predicted that Jabot would fail, their father's multinational company would fail, and they wouldn't have anything to leave their children and grandkids unless Jack saw Diane for who she truly was. Billy expressed to Ashley his disdain for what Jack was doing and his dislike of Diane, but he refused to give up on Jebot. Before things got out of hand, he inquired about her plans for saving them. Although she claimed to have an idea, she expressed uncertainty as to Billy's reaction. Ashley informed Billy that because Diane couldn't be trusted, he was in the ideal position to reveal her. Ashley predicted that Diane would eventually reveal her true colors given her position in the executive suite. After some coaxing from Billy, she remarked that Diane would ruin everything because she was inexperienced. Ashley predicted that everyone would eventually recognize how Diane's irrational drive for power was harming their father's business. She claimed Billy could make anything work. Ashley admitted to Billy that she hadn't handled the situation effectively since she had been irate and let bitterness rule her. Ashley claimed that all she wanted Billy to do was to keep nudging Diane subtly until Diane revealed her true intentions. At that point, they would move in and take over Jabot, saving their father's business. She claimed it was for Jabot's benefit and the legacy of their father. Billy, according to her, might be the family's hero. Billy stated he needed to consider it. When Tucker arrived at the Chancellor residence, he congratulated Devon on agreeing to serve as his best man and expressed his gratitude. Devon claimed that while Abby wasn't overly fond of Ashley, he and Abby were really happy for Tucker and Ashley. Devon claimed that it seemed as though Ashley wanted to destroy Jebot in order to exact revenge on Diane and didn't care who she damaged in the process. Tucker clarified that wasn't the case since Ashley was worried Jack and Diane would inflict the business and themselves severe harm. He hoped he had stopped Ashley from making any more daring plans and persuaded her to put more emphasis on the wedding. Tucker told Devon that Ashley's heart was being broken by the conflict with Jack. Devon acknowledged that he and Abby believed Tucker had been pressuring Ashley to join Jack in battle. Given his experience, Tucker claimed to understand. Devon claimed that Abby had thought Ashley was responsible for suing Jack and the business. Tucker assured Abby that Ashley's motives were innocent and that she shouldn't be concerned. He claimed that neither he nor Ashley trusted Diane. Tucker claimed that Ashley wanted to save Jack and uphold Jebot's legacy. Devon asserted that Abby needed to hear Ashley make that clear. He claimed that he didn't believe Ashley understood the potential repercussions of a sibling dispute. 
Jack at Jabolt questioned Diane about her confidence in locating a new director of marketing. Diane acknowledged that she did, but not particularly with regard to Kyle's ruining his life. Summer came back to give Jack a printed copy of the Chelsea press release. He inquired as to Summer's well-being. In response, Summer said she wasn't, but she will be. She claimed that she was starting to face the fact that she and Kyle had reached their breaking point and that their relationship was finished. If Kyle could move on, she claimed, so could she. Summer has gone. Billy showed up just as Jack and Diane were about to leave. He claimed that Ashley had invited him to participate in her idea of Jack and his scheme. In order for Jack to recognize Diane for who she really was, Ashley wanted him to act as the Trojan horse at Jeboat and encourage Diane to become obnoxious and greedy. The overall goal was to let Diane hurt Jebot with her poor choices and selfish ambitions. He played a role in letting it happen and letting Jebot collapse, not far enough to damage its reputation, but far enough for Tucker and Ashley to take over, absorb Jebot's assets and workforce, and start their own business. Billy revealed to Jack that Ashley has a coming power move in place to preserve John's legacy. Diane claimed that she was the main focus. She claimed that ever since she entered that building all those years ago, Ashley had loathed her. Diane advised them to figure out how to take advantage of the fact that Ashley and Tucker trusted Billy enough to engage him in their plan. Tucker rejoined Ashley at the athletic club after returning. He inquired as to Billy's remarks. She stated that although Billy had not formally decided to assist them, he had shown signs of doing so. If Billy joined them, she claimed, they could actually save Jabot and perhaps even Jack. Ashley needed to make amends with Abby, according to Tucker, who claimed that he was more interested in the work they were producing together. He advised them to avoid what Tucker and Ashley were contemplating since it might put Ashley and Abby at odds. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.